Welcome to Bishop Justice. Hey, it's another week, and we hope you had a happy Valentine's Day, male or female. Uh, I did what I could for my wife, and I'm, she's happy. She had no complaints. So I hope you did what you needed to do. So you know we got to open up with a Bible verse. Here we go. This is, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let me talk about my sponsors. Got a couple new sponsors this week. Rafis Holler's Chicken Sausages. For great taste in Holler, chicken, breast, uh, chicken breakfast sausages, please contact Rafis Doctor, 706-790-9604 or 301-213-5926 for any questions, concerns, or purchases. Guess what? Raceway. You know that brand new Raceway on Riceboro Road headed towards Augusta Mall? Raceway number 6872-3481 Wrightsboro Road, Augusta, Georgia 30909. The owner is Jeffrey A. Griffin. Tell the Bishop sent you, you get a 10% discount. 10% discount at Raceway that you come in there and said the Bishop Justice sent you. His number is 706-733-2328 or 803-348-4901. He does own another raceway in Columbia, South Carolina. Also, we have Green and Green Construction, commercial and residential, licensed and bonded contract in Georgia and South Carolina. Call Melvin Green Jr. today at 706-833-2540 or 706-592-6555. That's all your construction needs. Talk to Green and Green Construction. We also have Professor Ulysses W. Mays motivational speaker and black history lecturer. His number is 706-793-2551. We also have another one today. We have the South Augusta um, DUI Defensive Driving School, a certified alcohol and drug use risk reduction program, DUI school and defensive driving school. For more information, call 706-792-1608. A friend indeed to a friend in need. The owner is Cleveland Jones, certified addiction counselor. A good man, man of Christ, a man of God. So go check him out. That number is 706-792-1608. Thank you, Cleveland Jones. Make sure you um, take care and look after the sponsors of this show and patronize them. Well, no, one other thing we have in the news. We got a new segment today called In the News. We're always going to talk about three things every show. Well, there's a new Walmart going to be done downtown, an old public transit building. There's more to that story, but it's going <laughs> Walmart is coming downtown, then they're coming down by my house uh, down from Somerville on Riceboro Road. Smoking ban was voted down. Don't understand that. I have asthma. I can't stand secondhand smoke. But And then we got Jeremy Lin, New York Knicks. My uncle used to play for New York Knicks. And, hey, Jeremy Lin is a good sensation story. I think he's a good guy, good kid. Well, with that said, let's get to the heart of the show. Well, I talked to her. I called her. I tried to get her the last show. Couldn't get her. My fault. At the last minute, I tried to call her. <laughs> My fault. But um, it's one of those things that Black History Month, we try to follow, off with, uh, follow up with things that we want to honor people while they are alive. Uh, I talked to her about Whitney Houston and some other things, but we want to honor our great black historians while they are here. And uh, she did something for me a couple years ago. I asked her then, and she came and did something at the CSRA African-American Association, the slides for a presentation. It was wonderful, and, um, and I always kept it in my mind, in my heart, uh, in, in my soul. And, you know, as a pastor of the church, I got I to keep those things in mind. Without further ado, uh, ado we have Miss Christine Miller Betts from Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History here today. Miss Betts, thank you. Thank you. Patricia. The pleasure is all mine. I know we were, um, like I told you today, I uh, 
wore my jacket was out there. The, the weather changed. Things just go on. You never, the thing is, you can't, um, God does what he wants to do. And a lot of people think they are smaller than God. I can't figure that out. But I was reading your bio, and we have a lot of things in common. Um, I have a biology degree, and I'm minored in chemistry. And by trade, you're a nurse. Absolutely. That's where I got I started. Didn't, I, never, I, didn't don't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, how I got to be a nurse was I grew up in North Carolina, and I grew up on a farm, and I was one of ten children. And we went to school. It was very important in my family's, uh, in my family mm -hmm. that we all went to college. And when it was time for me, I was the first, and when it was time for me to go to college, I was asked what I was going to major in. No one ever asked me that before. And I just assumed that I was going to be an artist. That's what I enjoy doing. And I plan to do that the rest of my life. But my dad looked at me and he said, oh, no, you're not going to be an artist. You can't make a living doing that. So they had assumed that I would be a teacher. As time went on, they encouraged us to study, do good work, they didn't focus too much on what it is you're going to do when you become a graduate. So I decided to go into nursing because I was not interested at that time in teaching. But what happened after that, after I went to nursing school in Atlanta, mm -hmm. Grady Hospital, I uh, went into the military and I did uh, nursing in a few hospitals. and. I stayed in for a couple of years, and then I was married and got out. You were a soldier yourself? Yes, oh, I was yeah, a soldier I mean, myself. I, 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 when you said that, I, I'm a military deployment and I'm a soldier. soldier I'm yeah, I was a soldier adventure. too. I, I was in. Heart, but I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I thought you were. I was in the nursing. I was oh. married to a soldier too. Okay. I was. Okay. I was in the nursing corps. I got you. And my husband was in the chaplain's corps. Okay. In the army, and so after. I started a family, mm -hmm. my only child. I had one child, or we had one child. Um, I went back to school and I taught nursing. After I finished my degrees, right. I taught nursing at various colleges and universities throughout the United States, and I enjoyed it very much. And that is something awesome, because you mm -hmm. know, um, all my children are born in military hospitals. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, back in the day, you're kind of leery of military hospitals. You know, you're like, ooh, don't go to the hospital. But now, there's so much uh, advance, and you got some of the greatest doctors in military hospitals now. But back then, I, I never went to the doctor. But you are also, I was reading this, it's pretty interesting. I was just trying to figure out how you got to that. So we both Army veterans. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and then we have something else in common. My daughter's a Delta, and you're a Delta. Absolutely. Well, tell me. Tell me about Delta Sigma Theta. What are y'all doing? What are we doing now? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we are a public service organization. Right. And we do uh, different projects, mostly with children. Right. In the community, we have a group of uh, young people we call Dell Teens, mm. and a group works with them. And then we have Delta Gems, another group. Mm -hmm that we work with, and then we do many other things in the community. And of course, the Lucy Craft Laney Museum well, we'll is a corporation. A I'm going to let is. you talk about I'm going to let you plug that in a minute. You know? okay. I had to let you get the Deltas in because my daughter said, make sure you talk about Deltas, Daddy. Okay. So I'm, I'm okay. going to let you plug that. And I've been a Delta for many, many, many years. Right, and, right. And uh, so. Well, Deltas think they rule the world. Is that true? Y'all think y'all the best of the best? Uh, we now. think we're pretty good. Okay, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking at Germany. I spent nine years in Germany. Uh -huh. Now, where were you in Germany? We The first time I went to Germany was Baumholder. Okay. And we were there for three years. All right. And then we came back to the States. And later on, we went to Schweinfurt, okay. Germany. And I stayed over for a while because when we went the second time, I started working for the military for education services right. as well as... Um, Counseling. I saw that because I was in Augsburg and I was in, uh, actually when I went as a dependent, mm -hmm. I was in uh, Frank Frankfurt and then I was in Würzburg. Mm -hmm. And then as a soldier, I was in Augsburg. I was a uh, right. military police officer mm -hmm. in um, Provost Marshal 7th Corps. 
and I see that what else? Uh, Prairie View. Is that where you went to get to undergrad? Prairie View. No, I taught. Oh, you taught uh, Prairie nursing. View. Nursing. The reason I'm saying that uh -huh. I went to a historical black college. Okay. I went to Fayetteville State University. Oh, okay. And um, I got my master's degree somewhere else. But mm -hmm. I always, I'm always proud of the historical black, black colleges, part. Yeah, right. black college. And we have one right here in Augusta, the Payne College, Payne which college. is really an outstanding institution. Yeah. And the Bradleys are doing just a wonderful, wonderful I know job it. with that program. I wish I would have got my continued on, but I got my PhD, my master's and PhD somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can never forget the education and the quality of living and certain other things that I got and I gained from the historical black college I never got anywhere else. And I took that with me into the military and with life. Okay, well, I got something we're going to talk about, and then we're going to, uh, let's see. I'll make sure I didn't leave anything out. We talked about that. North Carolina, you know, of course, I moved from North Carolina. I went to school at Fayetteville State, but okay. Yeah, one of my sisters went to Fayetteville State. Well, you know, I went to school. Kingsley Rowling went to King, uh, Fayetteville State. Oh, is that right? That's uh -huh. my, one of my best uh -huh. friends. She's gone and passed away. When she's in heaven, I'm sure. But uh, I used to take Kingsley around all the time, and I miss her dearly. But I wish we could have appreciated her more while she was alive. That's why I, I told you that we need to appreciate our, our historians, people like you, while they're alive and do more for you while they're That's why when she called me, she's called me that young, Rev, come pick me up. I got to go to the mall. I got to go do this. I got to do that. I said, yes, ma'am. I'm coming. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. So we need to do more for our, our mothers and for our historical blacks like you. A lot of times we're so busy racking our schedule mm -hmm. that we can't make time for our mothers or fathers to come stop by and say, hey, how you doing? What do you need? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have an organization I'm working on. I have 18 missionaries overseas. And I, I tell them all the time, take care of the elderly mm -hmm. while they're here. Mm -hmm. Not calling you old. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, that's okay. But, I am. <laughs> but you're not old. I'm proud of it. Well, you're not old at all. But you know, you, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes, but, um, so let's get down to, I was reading something uh, in the paper the other day, and then I looked and I thought about you. I saw the Black History Essay Contest, sponsored by the Gus Chronicle and Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History and Conference Center. Before I get into this, tell me about Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History, how you guys started with it, and tell me what y'all got going on now and what you're looking uh, to do in the future, and then we'll get back to talking about this. Okay, the Lucy Craft Laney Museum is the home of Lucy Craft Home. It's the former home of Lucy Craft Laney. Right. And Lucy Craft Laney, you may remember that she was born during slavery. She mm -hmm. became well educated, and she went to Atlanta University. When she completed her credentials, she went to various places in Georgia, including Milledgeville, Savannah, and her last stop was in Augusta. This is where she made her greatest contributions. Mm -hmm. And she started the Haynes Normal and Industrial Institute. She started the first kindergarten for children, black children in Augusta. And she started the Lamar Nursing School in Augusta. First black kindergarten? Mm -hmm. First oh, yeah. black kindergarten yeah. in Augusta. And uh, in doing so, she made a tremendous, tremendous contribution to our community. And when she died in 1993, uh, 1933, mm -hmm. she died. Her niece moved into her home. And in 1986, the home was badly damaged by fire, and her niece was in the home at the time. Mm -hmm. And she died as a result of that fire mm -hmm. from smoke inhalation. And at that time, Delta Sigma Theta was looking for a home. and. One person in our organization said, why don't we buy the Laney House? And some of us decided that we would, and we did, and we mm -hmm. formed a corporation called Delta Housing. Right. And we decided to make it into a museum. And that's how the museum got started. And we opened to the public in 1991, mm -hmm. and we've been open ever since. That is, that is amazing that y'all are. Uh that is something amazing. I um, I commend you for that because a lot of times I, I'm I'm just gonna put it out there. A lot of times us as, as black folk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we don't want to do the right thing as far as give back to the community and help mm -hmm. as much as we should when we have the opportunity to do such. Mm -hmm. 
um, I think there's a scripture in the Bible that God says if you can't do it, if you can't do it, uh, you can't take it to the grave with you. Um, so, um, but I'm looking at these here. Y'all sponsored a Black History Essay Contest. Tell me about that. Well, this is, uh, we do a spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do um, partnerships with many institutions in the community. All right. Uh, with the, some of the churches, we uh, work with uh, some of the other civic groups right. and that kind of thing. And also the schools, we spend mm -hmm. a lot of time in the schools. Ooh. And this is one project that we've had for a long time, 12 years. Yeah, I remember. Uh, 12 years ago, I had a conversation with Mr. Miller, who was the director of that department huh. at the Chronicle at the time. And we decided we were going to partner. We were going to do something. Right. And so I wanted to do an essay contest, but I thought that perhaps we could do it every month. Mm -hmm. And so he said, well, perhaps we could try one time this year mm -hmm. and see how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, we learned that it would take more time than just a month. We had to do a lot of planning. Right. And so we did our first one 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we reached out to all of the schools in the CSRA. And students were encouraged to write essays, wow. to uh, send them to us, and we, were, we graded them. Right. And then they were categorized in terms of first, second, third. I got it. And, uh, also, yes. Oh, well, and go also, ahead, go ahead, tell me. And also, um, honorable mention. Yeah, I saw that on the, on the, on the back. Yeah. So you actually. So we've been doing that. That is that it, that is, that's amazing. I looked at it, and um, I don't know if you know my story. I tell people all the time. Um, when I was in the Cub Scouts um, in Alexandria, Virginia, up in DC, my dad stationed in the Pentagon, <laughs> and I was supposed to write what the uh, Cub Scouts meant to me, and I wrote what <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. meant to me. Uh -huh. So my dad said, "You ain't gonna win nothing, son. They're gonna." Kill I'm throw that stuff out of there. Right? <laughs> I said, Dad, I'm not going to win first place, but I'm going to win second place. Uh -huh. That's the only reason I'm not going to win first place because I didn't write what they told me to do. Uh -huh. So when they, and they had a watch and they had a um, scrapbook, a photo album. And so when they called out the first place winner, it was a watch. I didn't want that watch. I knew they already had a watch. And um, they called out the second place winner, which was me. And I told my dad, I, said, I told you so. I think I was in the second grade, second or third mm -hmm. grade. And I, said, I told my dad, I told you so. But my mom said the reason why I got to be like that because I drank coffee. I was drinking coffee as a little kid with my granddad in New York City. We used to, I used to imitate my grandfather. Mm -hmm. and he was drinking coffee, so I sipped coffee, coffee like him. And we talk about black historians. You're trying to look up to somebody who's a positive role model. We all got our flaws. We all got our vice. We all got that. I look up to you. Like I said, I remember you from years ago. And I, I said, if I ever get back on TV, She's going to be one of the first people I have on there. Like I tried to call you a couple of weeks ago to get you on at the short notice, and, well, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. But here you are now. But I tell people all the time that I don't know what it is that we is we need to stand by each other more. Mm -hmm. It's not going on. Mm -hmm. It's not going on. It's, it's just one of those things that I... But anyway, I, that's a whole nother subject, how we don't stand by Well, let me so, say this yeah. about <laughs> our mission at the museum is to promote art, history, and the preservation of Mrs. Laney's home. Mm -hmm. And that we do. We do it through um, workshops. We do it through uh, tours right. and lectures and that kind of thing. And our primary focus is children. Mm. So we do all kinds of programs for children. Right. So we have workshops for them in all of those areas. And we also encourage the schools to partner with us. And sometimes now, because we don't have a lot of funding right. for school tours, we go to the schools. We have a very outstanding historian mm -hmm. at, uh, at the museum. Mm -hmm. And he does a lot of the school Work. If I can remember his name, I look. Is it Corey Rogers? Corey Rogers? Okay, uh, yeah. My mom's. I got a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. Corey well, anyway, he uh, he does most of the school mm -hmm. uh, work. He goes out to the schools, talk with the students, right. care of the message to the 
them. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, many times, the information that they take to their parents, they will bring them back to the museum, bring them to the museum on the weekends and that kind of thing. Well, you, you know what? So, I, I, I admire you. As you were growing up, um, of course, it's Black History Month, and like I told you, I wanted to admire you, uh, revere you while you're here, because we don't do that. We don't do those things until everybody's gone. But anyway, um, as you're growing up, who did you, as far as black history, did you admire? And who motivated you? Well, let me tell you what happened to me. When I started school, we went to a one-room schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. We had a teacher who taught us everything. And in the, mo in the morning when we arrived at school, mm -hmm. we got settled mm -hmm. and we did our devotions. And we sang mm -hmm. My Country Tis mm -hmm. We said the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. We sang the African American, mm -hmm. um, lift every voice and sing. Spiritual. Every day mm -hmm. we did that. And she taught us history. Mm -hmm. And we started to learn history very mm -hmm. early. Right. That was a part of our growing up. It was just a part of us. Right. And when we got our second teacher, it was the same thing. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. And so history was So what you're saying from the is beginning. The, per the person that you most admire was the teacher. The teacher. Uh -huh. And then okay. And so my parents, of course. Parents. My dad especially. Your dad. Mm -hmm. That's my rare dad. that people say that because everybody says mom. Uh, so no. How is my, your dad so special? Well, he was really special because and my mother was too. They don't talk about the black man anymore. Well, my dad. My father. <laughs> Dying breed, dad. <laughs> my father. What I remember him saying first, as I recall, is that you're going to grow up and you're going to be somebody. Mm. He always said that to all of us. And he made sure that we went to school and that we uh, got our homework. And he only went to the eighth grade, but he helped us with his homework, with our homework right. until we finished school. And he was a good mathematician. He was a really bright man, even though his mother died early, and he had to begin to work yeah. to take care of himself. And then, of course, he took care of us, and everybody had to go to college. There was only one person mm -hmm. in our family that did not go to college. All of us didn't finish, Why? but everybody had to go. That's just strange that you say dad. I mean, because you, you Miss Betts, today, I mean, who do they... <laughs> I mean, well, they there are they're, some. They just <laughs> bash dad. Now, of course, I love my father because I love my mother. I grew up in a two-parent home. That's what is rare. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, when you come in the military, you, you don't have much choice. Mm -hmm. uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is right. with mom and dad. Uh -huh. uh, I tell people all the time that the mistakes I made in, in, in my past or now, whatever, had nothing to do with my parents. That's just mm -hmm. my stupidity because mm -hmm. uh, my parents were excellent parents, great motivators. My mother was just dynamic. She was a philanthropist. She gave money away. I mean, she did what she could and she had sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. Just imagine growing up with a disease is no cure for knowing you're born to die. That's a tough thing to get up every morning knowing you're going to, your, today might be your last day. Mm -hmm. But you get up and my, my mother used to say, thank God. Mm -hmm. Thank God that you gave me another day. And people wonder how I can be like I can be going through a lot of things. I went through persecution and everything in my life. I think about my mother. And my mother, that's why you said your dad, but my mother, but she was just, my mother was only about this tall, and she was just a dynamo. And my dad, he's a military man, you know, he's six foot three, big dude. You know, don't say much, just whatever <laughs> goes, goes. <laughs> you don't, you know, ain't no discussion. But you know, I was thinking about the Lucy Craft Lane Museum. What are your future plans? Oh, my future plans are I'm going to stay with the museum I'm talking about the until, museum. yeah, until I'm tired. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Yes. You must have and a lifetime our, kind. What you, a Supreme Court judge? <laughs> <laughs> On the board no, of the museum? No, our, uh, to be realistic, <laughs> we, uh, we continue the programs that we are doing now, All and right. we just continue to look for new experiences okay. uh, for the children okay. especially. And one of the things that I want to um, mention is that I want to really encourage our listeners to support us financially uh -huh. because 
if we don't take care of our history right. for our children, for generations to come, right. who else is going to do it? And so that's what we do. And we encourage individuals. And it doesn't matter. Some people will send us a check for $25 right. or $15. Right. But those small amounts of money are just as meaningful mm -hmm. to us as a thousand dollars because if everybody in the community gave us fifty dollars mm -hmm. right and some of them do right but if each person who were to do fifty dollars it would go it would help us so much right. in providing the services for that we need to provide for children well me and my wife will give you a donation um, probably uh, in this month or next month, but, but as soon as I hit the big time, I'm going to give you a big check. <laughs> that makes me think about <laughs> once we were working with children, we didn't have a television in the museum. We had a small screen. Right. <laughs> and I went upstairs one day and I was talking with them. I was listening, actually. The leader was talking with them. And so she asked them what they were going to do when right. they grew up. And one of the little boys said, um, he was going to grow up, and mm. he was going to make a lot of money, mm. and he was going to buy the museum, a uh. big screen TV, uh. <laughs> television, well. and others talked about uh, other things that they were going to do and they were going to do for the well, museum. Well, you don't know. Ms. Best, we got to wrap it up. Uh -huh. Thank you. But Thank I you. promise you, uh, my wife's an MCG, but as soon as I hit the big time, we're going to give you a donation. But you know, give but us when more. I hit the big time, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bigger <laughs> check, but I, I'll give you a little check right now. You know, that this would week. be appreciated. So every little bit helps, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay. okay. I tell you what, boy, it's been a fantastic time today. Miss Christine Miller Betts, Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History. Uh, it's just, we wrapping up Black History Month, and I just enjoy it. Uh, next show, we're going to have congressional candidate. Uh, yes, ma'am. And I just want to say black history is yeah. every day That's at the right. Lucy Craft Laney Museum. Okay. Uh, next, next show we're going to have congressional candidate R.W. Allen, and then after that we'll have Barbara Gordon. And so we thank you for tuning in to Bishop Justice. We love you. Uh, a lot of things going on. If you want to advertise anything that's going on, you want to contact me. All the information will be on the screen. Patronize my sponsors. Hey, just remember that somebody out there is looking up to you and be a positive influence and bless somebody today. God loves you. I love you. This is Bishop Justice. We'll see you next time.